Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Black and White Show. We haven't had a Black and White Show for God knows how long. And you're thinking, who are these four handsome blokes? It's not the Beatles, but it's Newcastle Fans TV, very own Matt Livingston. Adam Phillips. Adam Phillips is back. He's back. He's a some fantastic, tra- some, some fantastic transfer uh, news potentially coming up for Newcastle. And of course, Carl Bright is also with us. But this video is sponsored by One Football League. Get ready. Hi everyone, this video is sponsored by OneFootball. OneFootball is the app that you all need. We all have it here at Newcastle Fans TV to get all the latest information on Newcastle United and the Premier League. And January is going to be huge as well with the January transfer window. Make sure you download OneFootball to get all the latest information on incomings and outgoings on Newcastle United. It is going to be a very, very busy month and OneFootball is proudly sponsored. Newcastle Fans TV is proudly sponsored by OneFootball. I can't get my words out because there's so many transfer news. Remember, if you want to get your WhatsApp read out in the second part of the Black and White Show with Lee, Lawler and co, the number is on your screen. It is 074-764-97166 for our UK viewers. Obviously, 44 being at the beginning. Your message will be guaranteed to be read out if you follow that WhatsApp number for any text message. in the short straw. (laughs) <laughs> I'm so short to be able to sit over the, the number Hey, it's all about transfers It's all about transfers You've got to make make moves, you know, to, to please everyone That's what you've just done there So Carl's in a much better position Evening, Ollie, get your comments in And we'll get some of them read out throughout the show as well But to guarantee your message, remember WhatsApp, the number is there Evening to all of these gents We've got so many players to go through But Adam, let's start things off with the man of the moment, Kieran Trippier, officially signed as the first player in the Saudi regime to take over. Kieran Trippier, yeah. £12 million. Pounds. Adam, are you buzzing? Yeah, I think it's it's the most sensible bit of business we've done in a long, long time. Um, we haven't had a decent right back. God, you, you may correct us, you may want to mention it. For, maybe it's Dabucci, like a, a half decent right back we've had. We've never kind of like had a decent full back. So, um, you know, gone to this policy where we only buy 18 to 20 year olds just to sell on with what an experienced England international. You know, the first player to play for the first England player to play for Newcastle since Andrews Townsend, I think, you know, five or six years ago. It's just a great bit of business. And I think we'll all agree it's exactly what the team needs a, a strong fullback. Um, the amount of goals we can see, crosses coming in the box, it's not stopping the cross. And, you know, you can argue what he's come for. You know, he, he's towards the end of his career the last four or five years. Does he want the money? Does he want to play for the club? You know, I, I don't. I don't care less. I just want to see him give hundred percent on the pitch, which I'm sure we'll see. Oh, definitely. And you talk about the last kind of right back that Newcastle signed that Newcastle fans were really happy about. And you mentioned Matthew Dabushi. Can anyone remember his chant at Newcastle? Uh, Chuck Carl's fingers. I can't think of it. Remember Dabushi's chant. No. I remember at Old Trafford when we beat New- when we beat Man United one 0 and literally after the full time whistle, we had such a good game. Was, you know the dance theme tune. Oh yes. Do, 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 do. <laughs> no, I didn't. I, I can't remember. <laughs> I kind of believe that you love your away games as well, Adam and Carl know. in particular. <laughs> <laughs> On my own. Anyway, um, <laughs> Matt. Fantastic bit of business by Newcastle to get trip here in twelve million pounds. Could rise up to £16 million, according to reports. Diego Simeone was gutted to see Trippier leave. He says, as you can see on the screen, we're grateful for everything Kieran did while he was here. We gave him 40 hours to get it all sorted. He's behaved very well. It's been very important to us. And Trippier in his uh, press conference mentioned the fact that, you know, uh, Senior, as they called him, is the, the owner of uh, Atletico Madrid and the manager as well. So everything went according to plan in terms of how Everything was left. Everybody left on good terms. So it's a fantastic bit of business. But twelve million pounds to start things off, rising to sixteen, perfect start. Yeah, uh, bloody hell! I mean, when it was being touted that it was twenty five, thirty mil, I was like, yeah, that that sounds about right for the quality of player we're getting. I was like, yeah, why not? I know he's getting on a bit, but you're getting, you know, this is a lad that played in the Euros final. It, we, there's no doubt the quality of this player that we're bringing in, and for tw- this is the same price we played for Matt Ritchie and John Joe Shelby. Like, no, no disrespect to those players, but 
the, the calibre of player and for it to be the first one in the door as well, that's a real indicator to other players that are looking to join the club as well. Um, I'm sure we'll get on to a few of them, but they'll see that as a statement of intent from the new owners and under the new management as well. So it's an absolutely 10 out of 10 signing because for value, for calibre of player, for timing, it just all perfect. Could not have gone better. Oh, 100%. And Carl, let's get your thoughts on this because... Kieran Trippier, I've watched Kieran Trippier play for Burnley, which is nearly 10 years ago now. Seems like such a long time ago. And I was a big fan of him back then. He ends the right-back debate, surely, doesn't he, Carl? Yeah, definitely. And I think um, the the main thing for me, especially watching his interview today, was getting a bit more of that steely attitude in the dressing room, that experience, that bite, something that we need in a relegation battle. And, you know, I think we've all bashed the likes of Jamal Lascelles in terms of his performances as of late. I think even this will lift players in terms of wanting to get the, the, themselves stuck in again and uh, any sort of you know, a, a attitude that's been going the wrong way. I think that's all eradicated, bringing people like, like uh, Kieran Trippier in. You know, for all the, the quality he's got on the ball and dead ball situations, for me, it's about him absolutely levering someone, getting the crowd roused and then, and then uh, pushing on from there. So, yeah, I'm absolutely over the moon with the sign. I'm just reiterate everything everyone said about it. I can't put a foot wrong with it. You'd definitely have a couple of cans to celebrate this news, wouldn't you, Adam? Oh, definitely. Just, just for change. <laughs> <laughs> the next player on the list, Dio, uh, Diego Carlos, the severe centre-half. Now, this one appears to be moving with a little bit of momentum. Jason Burt from the Telegraph has said this deal potentially is gathering pace. Now, Newcastle, according to Talk Sport, I know they're not the most reliable, said the other day that they had a £25 million bid rejected for Diego Carlos, the Sevilla centre-half, it is understood with a lot of different sources in the media that £35 million will just about tempt Sevilla into doing business with Newcastle United. Matt, he's definitely a position that we're looking at in terms of a centre-half. We'll mention Botman in a minute. But in the last hour, this one has really gathered pace. Why do you think Newcastle are looking at Diego Carlos? Well, he's undoubtedly an experienced player. He looks quite young there, but he's he's pushing 30. So he's been playing in the Spanish League for some time and obviously some success in Europe as well. Um, he's a big physical player, which obviously you need as a centre-back in the Premier League. Uh, and he'll bring some much-needed experience if we are to bring Botman in as well. Obviously, Botman's still quite young, uh, despite winning the league with Lille last year. Uh, he will need an experienced head alongside him. So... I can't see us signing one or the other. I think, well, if we sign one of the pair, I think it will be Botman, um, purely because looking ahead to the future, because Diego Carlos, while it would be a fantastic signing, he's probably only got two or three years at the most at the top of his game. So it would be a stopgap for a, a long-term centre-back, really. Um, but, you know, he's, he's been at the top of his game for a couple of seasons now, interest from some some top European clubs, which we hopefully will become sooner rather than later. Um but yeah, I think when you compare Botman and Carlos, the reason that we'd sign Carlos over him is that experience that he brings, that that age. Uh, I think he's captained his side a couple of times as well. But, you know, he's part of a, a very strong defence with the, his current side. So it would be a no-brainer to get him in. But I'm still, personally, I'm not 100% sold on the price you'd pay for a centre-back that's approaching his 30s. I mean, I'm not complaining. He's, he's much better than what we got. But I can't say my nose about it. But I, I don't know whether I'd pay more than what we've offered so far, which has been turned down. I'm not sure about that one, but yeah, that's just my personal opinion on that. Adam, is it a safe bet to get someone with a little bit of experience and maybe paying a bit over the odds, but could potentially guarantee you Premier League survival? I think, we, as, as Matt mentioned, we need we need that experience. Um, we, we need two centre-halves for me in this window. I don't think we've got two centre-halves good enough to keep us up. Um, so the, the, the two, the one now and the, the lad we'll go on to talk to, I... It's worth it. I, I get the concerns over, you know, potentially spending a bit more over because of the age. But at the end of the day, we've got the money now. And, and that's what we have to look at. We've got the funds now. If we have to overspend, we can. Some fans will disagree with that. But staying in the Premier League is it's, it's so important this season. And if we have to pay over the odds in this transfer window, which we will because clubs hate us now, then so be it. Let's do it. Don't really care anymore. I love that. I love how everyone's going to hate Newcastle United in a couple of years' time. Um, Carl, I want to mention Dusan Vlahovic, if I pronounce that right. The young, young Fiorentina striker worth up to 70 million euros. That's how much Fiorentina want for this young man. And he's been scoring goals galore. 41 goals for club and country. There's a reason why that price tag is on this young man. 
Arsenal have been heavily linked, and even David Ornstein has said in The Athletic this morning that Arsenal are potentially leaving the race in this one, but Newcastle do have firm interest. Do you think this one is a bit too much too soon in terms of Newcastle United? Because I, I, I just don't see this one happening for reasons that because we're not in the, in, even in Europe at the minute. Yeah, I think it is a real difficult one. He's um, He's obviously... You know, pulling up trees at the moment. I think he scored 16 goals in 19 games or something so far. So obviously gaining um, a lot of attention from from clubs around Europe. And I do think it could be a step too far in terms of um, attracting that that caliber of player to Newcastle United at the moment. Um, you know, obviously we're more than deserving of it. But when you're in a relegation battle, does he necessarily want to ha- take that risk at the moment? I don't know, but. You know, that being said, money does talk. I don't care what anyone says, money talks at the end of the day. Um, you know, Villa are paying 267 grand a week for Philip Coutinho, who might not be be what you expect. You know, I think you throw enough money at someone, then then they're going to look at it and age is with them as well. So it depends what, what, what mindset he's got. I don't know enough about him to, to look at him and say, you know, it's a challenge that he'd, he'd want to take on. But I, I, I do echo what he's I think it probably is a push too far at the moment. Matt, do you think this one's just outside our reach at the minute in terms of where we are as a football club? And do you think 70 million euros is just a bit of a stretch? Even though we have the money to do the deal, it's just a bit of a stretch where we are at the minute. Yeah, I think personally, like it's a bit, like you say, a bit of a stretch. 70 mil is probably the right price for a player with that kind of talent and and um, the kind of promise that he's showing. But then you're going from one league in Italy to <laughs> in the Premier League and we've seen players struggle to adapt to that league time and time again. So that's a big, big risk for a player that won't necessarily come in and score goals. The impact you need straight away, as Adam mentioned, you've got to stay in the league straight away. You know, it's absolutely a position we need to strengthen. We need a goal scorer. Is, or do we take a, a 70 million pound or however much it is risk on a young lad that may, may or may not adapt to the league. And it looks like he's got his head in the clouds a bit anyway, from what I'm reading. He doesn't seem to, he seemed to turn his nose up a little bit at the idea of coming to a club like Newcastle. He wants to, you know, a big move to Arsenal or Milan. And um, that's, that's what he seemingly comes across as. Obviously we, we only know what we read in the papers and online. I um, think it's a b- bit of a stretch too far. I mean, I'd love it if we got him in. I think he's a very, very talented young lad, but yeah, I can't see this one happening personally. Yeah, remember, if you want to get your messages read out on WhatsApp, the number is on your screen, 074-764-97166. And also, if you want to get your comments on YouTube, we will do our best to get them read out. But if you want your messages read out, guaranteed, it is through our WhatsApp here on the Black and White Show. So you can give this video a like and subscribe to Newcastle Fan TV. We are on the road to 40,000 subscribers, so if you can give us a hand with that, that would be more than appreciated. Adam, Sven... Botman, Newcastle's number one centre-half targets now. There has been an approved offer. The first offer was around the £25 million mark, which was rejected by Lille. Lille don't really want to do business in this window. Now, Lille are in the Champions League last 16. They played Chelsea in a two-legged affair. They aren't in the race for the title in France, but they are in the race for Champions League qualification. So, Botman is a big part of their plans. The big thing... Lille are in real financial difficulty. They need a big summer, well, a big spending spree, really, for players to leave the football club. They kind of need to rebuild. And Newcastle are certainly interested in helping them by putting an improved offer is in the region of 35 to 37 and a half million pounds. Charitable, charitable club, ain't well, that's well. <laughs> you know, every, every, everyone, 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 everyone hates us, but we'll, we'll give them a few quid just to keep everybody happy as well at the same time. But Adam, <laughs> exactly. this... <laughs> exactly. But Adam, this is the man that Newcastle United wants. Do you think Newcastle United will get their man? I, I do. I, I think this one will go through. Um may not be as, as quick as we hope. I, I in time for Watford next week, but I do think this is a deal that'll get done. I think it's a move. I know they'll don't want to sell, but as you said, they're a mess and they need the money. And that's that's obviously plays in given we're filthy rich now, if you just don't know. Um it plays in our hands. <laughs> So I do, <laughs> I do think this one will get done and he's exactly the type of player we need. Um, in our chat, the wise old Sam Mulner, I thought, hit the nail on the head. This could be our Vincent Company signing if we get it right. Mm. Um, he, he's, he's that good of a, a player at such a young age. Not that I know much about him, to be honest. You know, I'm not going to sit in black people saying I know the stats and ins and outs, but 
you know, you look at what Man City did, they bought sensible in certain transfer windows and, and this could be a very sensible signing. Was it 30 million euros, I think you said? Um, yeah, yeah pocket money goes now. Pocket money. So, mm. um, I, I, think that's one, I think that's one that needs to Um I, I do think we need two centre-halves, but this should be the number one for me. Carl, he has put a couple of indications that he wants to move. He's been liking a few Instagram posts, to say the least. So, the player certainly seems keen. If you hear other reports as well, apparently personal terms have already been agreed as well. It's just agreeing a fee with Lille. So, everything seems to be in place for the fee with Lille. Again, it's coming back to the price. It's coming back to everyone knows that Newcastle United have got money. Let's try and get as much money out of them as possible. Do you expect this one to be the next one? Do you think Newcastle can get their bot man? Yeah, I, I, I absolutely do. Um, I've been thinking about it, you know, over the last few days. And after the amount of attention it's it's garnered in the media, like it doesn't get that much attention if there's no substance behind it. Um, Lille are doing exactly that, just holding out for more money. It is what it is. We'll pay them um, to get it over the line because I th- like they've obviously said that he's the number one target. They will sign him. I'll be very, very surprised if they don't. Um I I think it'll be done in the next seven days. I think it'll be done before that Watford game, to be fair. Um, So, yeah. Does it Um, need to be done before that Watford game, Carl? Yeah, Yeah. definitely. Biggest game of the season. Biggest game of the season. Definitely. Um, Yeah, we, we, you know, we need to go and win the game. But, but, uh, you know, with the likes of Ishmael Saar and and, and them sorts of players, we need to be some remotely solid at the back and, and having the likes of Botman and Trippier certainly put us on the way to that. Uh, the next one on my list, Matt, is Luca Dean. Now, this one has been very, very interesting to read over the last four or five days. Newcastle expressed an interest, which every media outlet basically said that was true. But on, there was a bit of confusion uh, the other night, Sky reporting that Newcastle had made a bid of £22.5 million pounds for Luca Dean. And then it was kind of retracted that that wasn't the case. Luca Dean, if you're Fabrizio Romano, I saw a funny tweet actually. Fabrizio Romano walks into a cafe. The cafe, the cafe man goes, What do you want? Luca Dean is not going to Newcastle. Luca Dean is not going to Newcastle. So if you're a Fabrizio Romano, Luca Dean is definitely not going to Newcastle. There's also rumors that he wants 200 grand a week and he wants to go to London. So this one looks like it's not going to happen, Matt. Are you disappointed that it's not happening? I know I'm not. I'm just going to sound bitter, but. I genuinely couldn't care less. I don't rate him that much because for what we bring him in for, you know, he's, he's an okay left back. Defensively, he's not the solid, but it's his set piece delivery that he's, that's what makes him stand out at left back. And we've just bought a set piece expert in Kieran Trippier, whether that's corners or free kicks, this man's going to put it on a dime for every single time. And that's what Dini stands out for. So I don't know why we're so heavily invested in it. An aging left back that we're going to be priced out of because we're, you know, it's a Premier League rival that won't sell for cheap you know they're saying they want long staff in return 25 plus mil I think there's better options I I couldn't name one I mean I'm sure people in the comments will let us know but there's better options out there than than bringing Luca Dini in Uh, you know if he signed up I wouldn't say no to it obviously he's better than what we've got but I'm I'm not bothered that he you know he's he's snubbed us and he wants to go to London fine go to London play third fiddle behind Marcos Alonso and Ben Chilwell be my guest. Like, I, I don't care. When players have an ego like that and they, you, you, you know, you've lived in Everton for however long you've been all over the world with this career, why why turn us, why turn it down now? You know, he'd be on good money. He'd say he wants 200 grand a week already. I don't understand, like, the mentality but like, publicly going out and whether it's his agent or whether it's him, you know, saying that he wants to move to Chelsea or whatever. But yeah, not, I know I sound bitter, but I genuinely, before he even, you know, said that he didn't want to come here, I, I could wasn't that excited when we were linked with him. There's better players out there for me. I'd even take Liverpool's backup left back over Everton's first choice left back. So, I mean, I think that says it all about him personally. I don't know what the other lads think, but I'm not bothered that he's snubbed us at all. Adam, are you bothered? Because, you know, he has been at Everton for a few years. He is Premier League proven as well. So that would be a bonus. You know, he's not in case of like cases of Botman and Carlos. You know, he's, yeah. he's not Premier League proven in that sense. But again... <laughs> It, it, it does seem that he, he feels like he's better than Newcastle at this moment in time in his career. There is the rumours of Nicolas uh, Tagliafico, if I pronounce that right, from Ajax, but Dinier seems to be the one that, uh, well, 
that was certainly one of the uh, number one targets in that position for Newcastle. Yeah, I mean, I think it is important we do get a left back in this window. Um, we can't rely on Lewis and Richie for the for the remainder of the season. Um, but I, I kind of echo what Matt says really. Again, I, I'm not sure of names, but the, I, if, if was it 22, 25 million, and then plus maybe 200 grand a week. No, I'm, I'm not that too concerned. Um, we need grafters. We need people who are going to run the heart out for the club. Yeah, I think we'll do that. What when I think they'll do that? You know, they're coming in, the buying in the project. That's what the, the word that keeps getting used. This is going to be a project. And I think they was digging. I think he just been for the money. And we were always going to get that at this at this club. You know, now we're filthy rich. Um, we're, we're going to get the odd player like that. Um, keep on saying that. I'll keep yeah. on saying that. I know. We, <laughs> this, this time last year we talked about trying to get Chowdhury on loan. So you know, I'm enjoying this video. But yeah, you know, it's um, it's um, he's one. If he goes to Chelsea or goes to West Ham, um, good luck, bro. I'm not. I'm not too concerned. Yeah, uh, and call the, the next player. Oh, go on, Matt. Sorry, go on. All right, I would just. I mean, it, it, I would say that we do need to sign a left back, but the games that Jamal Lewis came in when he was starting, he looked all right. You know, if you put him alongside a solid defense, say it's Botman and Carlos, or Botman and someone else, uh, along with Trippier as well, I can see Jamal Lewis being the um, like the starting left back for us for at least till the end of the season when he's back fit. I think it's a couple of weeks he's got left on his injury return, so it's yeah, not a priority. Not Sorry, Adam, that's, my, on. that's all. That's my only concern with Lewis. It wasn't his performances. Sorry, it was there. Um, if you get three or four games, he then misses four or five. He, he's just yeah. he's that yeah. type of player. Um, yeah. Matt Richardson, he's not. I like Matt Richardson. Goes wrong with there. I do think we need cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. So I do. Certainly do. It'll be interesting to see because I think that's a really good point about Jamal Lewis as well. Getting the comments as well. If you think Jamal Lewis can actually benefit with better players around him, which again, crazy to think that Newcastle have two new centre halves by the time. Uh, February comes along. Uh, Carl, I want you to talk about Todd Cantwell. Now, this one, again, there's so many players that have been reported <laughs> to be close, but Norwich look like they will accept an offer in a region of 15 to 20 million pounds for the attacking player, number 10. You can play as obviously a number seven, number 11, even a false nine, if in desperate measures. It seems to me that Norwich. Are ready to do a deal, Carl, but he seen his, his career's been a bit up and down in Norwich because he had a really good first season in the Premier League with Norwich when they got promoted a couple of years ago. Done okay in the Championship, but doesn't seem to be getting games now. Why do you think Norwich would want to do business now? I know there's six months left on the contract, but why would not give this guy a new contract and be so important for them? I think maybe they think that, that they're almost coming to terms with the fact that they're probably going to go down or they've got to do something drastic to tonight it's almost the situation we were in with Dwight Gale we could have offloaded him for 15 to 20 million we took that risk and then obviously you know thankfully we were taken over but had we not we'd not got anything for him so I think they're probably looking at it thinking it's a last last kind of gasp in terms of getting some financial value out of him um and I echo what you say like I'd I'd like Todd Cantwell but he's definitely been up and down um and I think he would um, I think he would excel more, obviously, with better players around him. I, I think we definitely have more flair players in, in in the side than than uh, than Norwich do. So I I like the signing. You know, I'm not blown away by it, of course, but I do think it absolutely strengthens our midfield. And um, you know, I think he would be more productive than Miggy, for example, in a similar position. Adam, so, is yeah. he better than what we've got? Was that for me? Sorry, Joey. Yeah, I was just going to say, is he better than what we've got? Um, no, I don't think so. Um, a bit, a bit more legs, possibly. Again, um, every time I watch Norwich, he doesn't stand out for me. Um, people may disagree. I don't think. Um, yes, I mean, he wouldn't. I don't think he'd excite too many fans. Um, coming in. Um, but again, the games I do watch Norwich, he's not someone I go. Up, I'd love to have him in the team, but that's that's just me personally. Uh, Matt, I want to get your opinion on Todd Cantwell as well because you've watched you watch a lot of football as well and you've seen Todd Cantwell play in the Championship in Norwich and he hasn't, had, he hasn't played many games this season. He's only played two games under Dean Smith. He's played a couple of games under Daniel Farker in the Premier League before he was sacked by Norwich. So there's obviously an issue there. What do you think the issue is? I, I, I don't understand it. I know they brought different players in and they're trying to play a different system. They made a lot of signings this year in Norwich and I think they've one of the reasons they've struggled this year is because they've fail to get them all into a right system and the player, the right players aren't in the right positions and it's not functioning well. 
they just don't have room for a kind of creative number 10 almost who wants to get the ball into his feet. He was he thriving in the championship. You know, we see players so often fail to make a step up to the Premier League. This is his second attempt now. Um, you know, as a signing, it doesn't excite me. I don't think it's better than what we have. If you're going to pay 15, 20 million quid for a creative English number 10, try for Jesse Lingard. They're both players lacking game time. You know, we need realistically, we need someone that's going to come in and hit the ground running. You want goals and assists from this player if you want a creative number 10. Todd Cantwell, for me, doesn't seem to bring that to the team that we've got. He doesn't fit into the system. You know, we've seemed to be playing like a 4 5 1 almost with Joe Linton dropping into centre mid, or maybe even a 4 3 3 when we're in the attack. Doesn't really seem to fit Todd Cantwell's style of play unless you play him as like a box to box midfielder, like we tried with Joe Willock, which hasn't seemed to work out. So, yeah, it doesn't excite me in the slightest. It would be okay if he came in, but I can't see him being more than a bench player, to be honest. And £15 million for a bench player, even when you're one of the richest clubs in the world, is a bit excessive for me. Yeah, just a little bit. I've got a new member. I'll see if I can pronounce this member's name right. Whale Abdulassun, if I've pronounced that wrong, which I'm very, very sure I've pronounced wrong. I do apologise, but welcome to, <laughs> welcome to the membership club. If you want to do exactly the same, by all means, become a member. You can get your chats read out. And again, Super Chats and WhatsApp uh, chats as well will be read out throughout the show. Remember, this number is on screen 074-764-971-66. Carl, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang's next. Actually, he can go fuck sorry, himself. He can go fuck sorry. himself. <laughs> I'll tell, 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 tell a lie. I'll tell a lie. It's actually Aaron Ramsey. Aaron Ramsey. Okay. Next. I'll um, take that one. <laughs> But we know Carl's being to get Emmerich or Bamiyang, so that's a bit of a spoiler in it, so he's all there. Um, but Aaron Ramsey, sorry, Carl. Um, Juventus have pretty much said he can go, loan or permanent. They would prefer permanent. Um, but a bit like the Coutinho deal, they're happy to do it. They're happy to do a loan deal to start things off. Um, his wages are astronomical, so Juventus are going to have yeah. to help out in that, in that regard. At the minute, the bookies can't separate Crystal Palace or Newcastle in terms of favourites to sign the Welshman. Sam Mullen is a big, big fan. Are you a big, big fan? Oh, massively. I really enjoyed watching him when he was at Arsenal. I can't... And I, this is no disrespect to Crystal Palace other than the fact, you know, that they're, they're located in London. I'm just thinking why you would want to go and sign there. You know, if, if Newcastle are serious about staying up, which we are, and they invest heavily to stay up, surely he's going to be looking at the bigger picture, even if it's for the next... Only for the next three or four years, thinking, I want to be a part of that. Do you know what I mean? So... Um, I would absolutely love Newcastle to sign Aaron Ramsey. I really would. Um, definitely on my radar. If if um we could have afforded him, um at any point really, I'd I'd he he'd just be the main focal point in the midfield. Fantastic player, calm on the ball. Um, obviously a great head on his shoulders and and uh, abundance of experience, European experience as well, and international. Adam, are you a fan? Sorry, Carl. Adam, are you a fan? Yeah, echo everything Carl says there, really. My me, me only issue, was, as you mentioned, is the wages. Although we can afford the wages now, I'm, I'm, I've always been of the mindset is you don't pay over the odds on wages. Transfer fees, you can't really you can't really um, stop because clubs overinflate the price on players. But wages, that's you know an individual and an agent's choice of how much money they want. No one should be on, right, what's he on? About nearly half a million a year. Yeah, yeah we, something like that. Something half million a week. Like, so, yeah, so... Um, yeah, I'm I'm, a, I'm not a fan of you know paying big wages like that. Um, but if we could get him at Newcastle, on sensible money, sensible wages, you know. And again, when you pay big wages, sometimes the heart's not in the club; it's not on the pitch. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he'd probably be one of our best signings in, in a long time, Aaron Ramsey. But again, it's he's got to buy into the project. You know, he's we're, bottom, we're, we're second bottom of the league. Hey, he's not coming to to try and get in top four. He's coming to try and save, save our skin. So it's, yeah. it's a completely, completely different mentality than what he's used to. Um, same for all these players we talked about. You know, this this isn't a let's win games to go and win the league. This is we need to get out of trouble here and, and, and start a project next season. The argument is, Matt, that he only really does it on the international stage with Aaron Ramsey. He does very, very well for Wales. Now I know international football to Serie A is very, very different to say the least. However, the Juventus fans aren't really happy with him. They don't feel like they've seen the best of Aaron Ramsey um, for at least the last two or three years. Um, do you get excited by this? Or do you feel that maybe in Aaron Ramsey's career, maybe Newcastle's not the right project for him? Because, again, there's going to get a lot of pressure 
immediately on him if he does sign. I, I personally, I'm, I'd be over the moon with this. Uh, people forget how good he was at Arsenal. You know, he came came through and he was a bench player for so long. The loyalty he showed to that club to stick by the rubbish that he went through to end up being basically the, the first name on the team sheet for them. He was a quality player for Arsenal. And, you know, I was sad to see him leave Arsenal because he was, at the time he was Mr. Arsenal. Like he was everything that the club stood for. And I think that loyalty is something you can't buy these days. So if he was to, you know, come on loan, if we stay up, then we sign him permanently at the end of the season. I think he's the perfect kind of player to take things forward. We need leaders to come in. We don't have enough leaders. We've got strong-headed individuals, but we don't have leaders. And he, I think he captained, well, when, when Gareth Bale's not there, he captains Wales, doesn't he? And he was Arsenal captain when he was here. So we need players like that. And we've got, we will have someone at the back, hopefully, that comes in um, and shows that up. Obviously, Trippy has already come in. Aaron Ramsey, for me, is that player in the midfield. I think that he'd be an absolutely fantastic signing. I know he's not necessarily done it with Juventus, but it's just a different style of play in a different league. So I think he'd come and he'd fit right back in that team. He'd be the first name on the team sheet in the midfield, apart from maybe Joe Linton, who's uh, reincarnated himself into some kind of Patrick Vieira midfielder. Um, but I think if, you look, if you're him looking at Palace and Newcastle, yeah, Palace are doing okay this season, but long-term is his future there because they're, they're such a turbulent club. Whereas you've got a project here that you could be the face of, um, you know, that for me, it's a no brainer, but obviously I'm biased and I think it would be a fantastic signing for the club and for the player. 100%. If you're Matt, tell him if he's wrong in the comments or do you agree with Matt? Get those comments in. If you like this video, there's 230 of you watching at the minute. So please give this video a like and we're on the road for, to 40,000 subscribers. If you can help us out in any small way, by all means, the subscribe button is there. It's absolutely free to do so. Carl, the question on everybody's lips: Why do you hate Pierre Emerick? Pierre Emerick Aubameyang? I don't. I don't hate him. It's just um, I think the attitude that is uh, portrayed at Arsenal as of late, and you know, there were times when we l were linked with him previously. He never really, you know, seemed interested in signing for Newcastle. And the, you know, I, I know it's hypocritical because Aaron Ramsey's on astronomical wages as well. But I just don't like anything about Aubameyang's attitude, um, especially as of late. Uh, he would definitely come and sit on 400 grand a week or whatever it is, not give a toss about what happens to us. Um, toxic, steer clear, couldn't, wouldn't want him anywhere near the club. That's Adam, about his it. Goal record speak. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. <laughs> Adam, his goal record speaks for itself, though. There's so many goals in Pierre Mikobamiang, even on a poor season, he's not done too bad goals wise. Uh, maybe apart from this season in particular, but he seems to be out of Arsenal, Arsenal's fans. I think if they could do a deal, I think they would do one this uh, January. But he is playing the African Cup of Nations, so it might be a late one in terms of Aubameyang if, if he does get a move. The, the only issue is, though, with, uh, with this one, Adam, Arsenal have only got four strikers on the book, really. Aubameyang, Lacazette and Ketia, who we're going to mention at the very end, and Balogun, who's just going on loan to Middlesbrough. So... Arsenal yeah. really need to replace Aubameyang if they're going to do something like that. And that's where Vlahovic comes from. Would you like to see Aubameyang in a black and white top? No, I mean, it's, it's not that I don't want to see him. As, as you say, his goal record is phenomenal. It's not something you can turn your nose at that. You know, he, he does get goals. But as I mentioned earlier, we need grafters for this last second half of the season. We need people who are going to, you know, blood, sweat and tears to get us three points on a weekend. To, we need to stay up and... Is his heart really going to be in Newcastle? Of course it's not. Um, he had the opportunity to come here years ago, um, well before Arsenal, and he didn't want to then. Um, let's say wages. Yeah, you, you obviously get people when you can't turn your nose up at goals, but is he going to come in and bang us loads of goals in? I'm, I'm not sure. Is his work rate going to be there to track back when he loses the ball? I don't think so. Um, so, you know, I, I, and I don't think it's someone Eddie, Eddie Howe's going to look at. Um, all the owners, I don't think it's the kind of blueprint they're looking for and people who are just coming for the money. Although we are going to have to overpay some wages, I don't think we're going to be looking at people who are just blatantly obvious, blatantly obviously coming for the big picture. I think age might be against the Bamiang as well. You know, he's not like he's a spring chicken. He's in his early thirties now. It's not exactly, I think, maybe the right deal for Newcastle. And maybe younger players are maybe the option. Um, in terms of another option, Matt Sarda Asmun, if I'm pronouncing that right, the Iranian striker from Zenit Saint Petersburg. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing these names right. Sarda Asmun. There you go. I thought I pronounced it wrong, and I probably have pronounced it wrong. So let me know in the comments how bad my pronunciations are in terms of some certain strikers and certain players that you're passing out of the with. But this could be a very, very cheap deal, Matt. £3 million 
is the potential fee because Leon have been in talks with this man. He's been fantastic for Zenit. He's done a pretty uh, decent amount of goals as well. But Leon haven't really managed to get the deal done. Now, Newcastle have been credited with a link uh, by the Daily Mail this week as well, saying that this is a potential deal that Newcastle are looking at, mainly because it's only £3 million pounds that Zenit wants because he's out of contract in June. Financially, it would make sense. Newcastle needs strikers because Callum Wilson, unfortunately, is going to be out for the next six to eight weeks. Is this a deal that Newcastle United should be doing right now? I, I, I'm I, torn on this one because I'll be honest, but until about a week ago, I had no idea who the lad was. Um, so I, <laughs> I, whatever I say, you take with a pinch of salt. But, you know, he's got a good goal record. He's cheap, but... Is he what we need? Like we were talking about Aubameyang earlier, and I agree with absolutely everything that was said. He's not the kind of player we need, but I'd rather take Aubameyang on a six-month loan, knowing that he can score goals in the Premier League, rather than take a three million pound punt on an. Um, I think he's is he Iranian? Am I getting that right? Iranian, yeah. Yeah, and on an Iranian lad that's been playing in the Russian league for like this is a, that deal stinks of Mike Ashley. Like that that that's a sign we make. <laughs> That's a signing we make five years ago. Someone that's been tearing it up in the Russian league comes in like Emmanuel Riviere, for example, and, and just flops on his ass. Like, it, I'm sure he looks good and he, he, he may be good. You know, I've, I've not watched the lad, but I really don't like the look of those kind of deals. And it's like, oh, we're going to steal him off Leon because Leon want him. Well, like, well, why did Leon want him? Do they want him as a striker? Do they want him as a backup striker? Why would he choose us over them? It's not a deal that I'm. Um, particularly excited by i'm sure some people like steve yeah steve knows what he, he's talking about he watches a lot of a lot of football across the world as oh i say steve knows knows what he's talking about he knows what he's talking about some of the time um but yeah he, this it's a deal that for me is not what we need if you're going to bring him in fair enough but bring someone else in that's going to challenge wilson for that that number one striker spot this Three million quid for anyone is a backup player for me. It's not as someone you bring in to save you from relegation in the Premier League. I'm sorry, it's just not. And, you know, with Aubameyang, he, I, I don't want him. But across the top five leagues in the last couple of seasons, his goals have led to the most points for his team out of any striker. And points are what goals to get your points is what you need in a relegation battle. So, I don't know. I'm just waffling. But it, I really wouldn't want to see... Nothing against the lad, but I wouldn't want to see him in a in a Newcastle United shirt to lead us to safety from relegation for me. I don't know about you guys. I've just waffled on for ages there, but I just find it crazy here. Literally, if I said to you six months ago, Matt, the, the this sentence would come out of your lips. I do not want Pierre Emerick Aubameyang at Newcastle United. Crazy, <laughs> absolutely crazy. <laughs> uh, we haven't got much too too much time, so we've got two more names. Before I can hand it over to Mr. Lawler, so Carl, I'm going to let you talk about the first name and Adam, the second name. So, Carl, I want you to tell me all about Darwin Nunes, the 22-year-old Benfica sensation. And Mark Douglas from I News, formerly of the Chronicle as well, saying that Newcastle have been quoted £50 million for him to swap Lisbon to St. James's Park. And I know there's some fantastic bridges in Newcastle, but can you see Nunes joining Nunes at Newcastle United? Uh, no, again, not not at the moment. It's um, it's just the 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 it's great to be linked with the, these kinds of names, but I just can't see them coming when we you know we are in a relegation scrap. Um, obviously his goal scoring record this season is unbelievable. I think he's um, scored a goal in every game he's played this season. So, you know, he's going to get. I, You'd expect him to go and get goals in the Premier League, and he's obviously <laughs> got more to offer than we have up top because we don't have anything right now. Um, but no, I'm, I'm not con convinced that he's someone would be able to sign. Um, you know, a decent amount of Champions League experience as well, scoring in the Champions League, um, scored a decent amount of goals in Europa League last season, I think it was, or the season prior. So it would be a fantastic um, string to add to the bow, but I, I, I don't see us um, signing him, unfortunately. Adam, Eddie and Ketia. What has Eddie and Ketia and Shola Amiobi got in common? So Eddie and Ketia and Kevin Nolan, what have they both got in common, I should say? Both scored a hat-trick against the Magnums. Oh, I tell you what, Adam, it's like you knew it all along. <laughs> Surely that's enough for him to sign for Newcastle United. Uh, I've watched him a few, I've watched him a few times, he's quality, um, but I, I don't think his, his future's away from Arsenal, unfortunately. Um, 
I think he's very very well thought of there, and I, I don't think all the money at the minute would, would prize him away, to be honest. Um, but again, it's good to be good to be linked with lads like this. Um, shows where we're going as a club, but I, I just can't see Arsenal letting them go to us. Maybe he's on loan, you know. Maybe he's never. He, he does need to play regular Premier League football. He's not in the team week in week out. Um, but long term, I can't see him leaving Arsenal. Yeah. Matt, six months left on the deal though, Eddie and Pet, yeah. He's rejected a contract already at Arsenal. He is scoring goals in the in the Carabao Cup, which they battered Sunderland by five goals to one. I'll mention that one more time. Um so he, I know Adam sees maybe that Arsenal have got a genuine, you know, interest long term as they want to keep him. But from the player's point of view, if he looks at Newcastle he goes, Well, everything ticks the boxes here. They're spending big money or wanting to spend big money. They need a striker. I could guarantee game time here with Callum Wilson not uh, not fair at the minute. Surely it makes sense for the player as well. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, I'm absolutely, he's angling for a way out. I think he's sick of being second, third and fourth fiddle at, at Arsenal. You know, he had a good, successful season with Leeds United a couple of seasons ago um, and came back thinking that, you know, this is my time. I, you know, I'll maybe get a few games off the bench when the strikers are injured. I'll start. And it's just not happened for him. I don't know what why he's not been getting game time. But then when Arsenal have been linked with the likes of Vlahovic, he's going to be looking at and thinking, where, why am I getting the shout in all this? So it's pretty low risk from us if we did invest in him, whether that's a loan or a permanent move. But you wouldn't be want to be paying over the odds for him like we did with Joe Willock. You know, this is this is a lad that barely makes the Arsenal first team. You're not if you're getting him permanently and he's six months left in his contract, you're not wanting to pay more than 15, 20 mil for him. Uh, and even that, I think, is is quite expensive for for what you're going to get. Uh, the same that ha- same problem I had with Sardar Asmoon, though, not going to be your number one option for for keeping you out of a relegation fight. Though he's not Premier League proven, he, he, he's not the few games he has had in the Premier League, he's not made an impact in. And you're taking the risk on a good Championship player doing it in the Premier League, and I don't think we can take that risk right now. Be a good signing, I think he'd be a good good impact player off the bench and one for the future, absolutely. But personally, for me, I don't think he should be our number one striker priority. I think we need someone that's going to score goals, maybe Aubameyang, maybe someone else, and then maybe an Asmoon or an Enketia as well to to bring in the rotation. Maybe say finally say goodbye to Dwight Gale. Um, quick last question for the three of you, Carl. I'm going to let you start. One word answers out of all the names that we've mentioned. If Newcastle can only bring in one, just one of the names that we've mentioned, who would you like them to bring in? Uh... Botman Adam Oh god um Ramsey Ooh. Matt yeah, it was a difficult one Well it's difficult cuz if Adam said Botman I was going to go Ramsey but I was going to go Botman <laughs> from the start so I'm going Botman as well I think we that's absolutely the position we need to strengthen it's, that's to be, well to be fair, we, we we could buy them all and just put them on the bench. <laughs> we still start the right deal. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's um, it's fascinating. If I were curiosity, I would have gone with Botman as well. But Ramsey's not a bad show, I have to say. But I think the centre half position is what we need. Um, do you think Newcastle fans would start going sing and saying na 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 Botman like you know, Batman? <laughs> I probably not. I'd, but I'm just gonna... Jolly, don't I'll, start that. If, if, prefer... that. if that does get started, I prefer <laughs> your uh, your Divock Origi one. <laughs> oh, Saturday night, and I like the way you move, Divock Origi. There you go. <laughs> Matt, 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 I know Matt would appreciate that one. <laughs> Matt, Remember, you can get your. No, Sorry, go on, go on. Uh, I was going to say, you should give us another rendition of your Debussy chant from the start. See if it jogs any more memories. Oh, you don't get this. You don't get this on ITV. I tell you. <laughs> um, anyway, there is nearly 300 people watching on YouTube. Please like this video, subscribe to Newcastle Fans TV as well. And remember, we've still got the second half of the Black and White Show with Lee Lawler. This is your chance to get your message put across and he will read it out. I'm promising, I'm promising you right now he will do that. 074-764-9716. My thanks to Carl, Matt and Adam. Stay where you are because in about 45 seconds time, Lee Lawler's going to be here. See you all in the second half. Yes, hello. How are you doing, everyone? 
<laughs> we don't know where Liam is. Uh, yes, hello everyone. Welcome back to the second part uh, of tonight's show. I'm joined by Steve. Steve, how are you? Steve, I've got you muted. Let me unmute you. How are you, mate? Uh, I'm pretty good. What about you? Am I Just still on mute? No, you're fine. Oh, I don't know where Liam is. Liam, Liam will be lurking around somewhere. <laughs> um, but uh, thank you very much for Johnny, for Adam, for Matt and yeah. Carl speaking all about transfers in the second half. Uh, we're going to read out your WhatsApps right now. We're also going to read out our members' comments as well, any super chats that have come. And then we're going to have a look at our fixture because of all the craziness that's been going on the past 24, 48 hours, 72 hours. We've actually got a game of football tomorrow as well. So we're going to look at the preview. We'll talk about Wilson's injury and um, maybe a couple of under-23 players that would be involved as well. But um, I think we shall have a look. Um, at the WhatsApp screen, and I think we've had a couple that have come through, and we'll go on to this one. This is from Unknown, so thank you very much for your message. I reckon Sven Botman is getting close, as well as Diego Carlos, gathering a lot of pace. Couldn't there be two centre-halves that could do it? However, I heard Fabian Shea is leaving. Uh, would you be against Shea leaving, Steve? Um, uh, I wouldn't give up on him quite yet. Um, but that's having said that, um, if we do get Diego Carlos and Sven Botman in the um, January transfer window, I don't really see him playing that much unless out of the outside some rotation and whatnot. I just think that he's had his time here, and I believe he wants to move out, right? Car? Exactly. Hasn't there been a rumor? Yeah, he's a free agent in the summer. So, right. But it's funny enough, he's been playing under Eddie Howe, so... We'll see on that one. We'll have to see. Yeah. And then the other one that just came in just before eight minutes ago uh, from Unknown says, Hi, lads. How about bringing Rondon back on loan from Everton? Now Calvin Lewin is fit. He's unlikely to get much game time at Goodison. Hey, uh, there's Liam. Liam. Uh, Liam's on there. Hello, Liam. We are live. I'll unmute you. There you go. Hello, <laughs> Liam. Um, for me, I think the, sh the ship has sailed for Solomon Rondon. I think... Um, yeah. Yes, we do need a striker, but I think that ship has sailed now, unfortunately. I think we should have signed him 12 months ago uh, from the Chinese market before Everton got him. Um, but please keep your WhatsApps coming in. You can see the number on your screen, which is... <laughs> Liam's gone off screen. 0747 We'll be reading them out again later on in the show. And I'm going to quickly run through some comments uh, that have come through. Uh, Ollie's gone out and say, we'll take Diego Carlos over Botman personally. Just more calm and composed and better on the ball than Botman. Elliot, I hope you are good, mate. Hope you see you on a fan reaction show shortly. Uh, good evening, everybody. I'm delighted with the right back signing in the transfer market today. Steve, you've got a few comments that have come through as well. Yeah. Um, so I quite like Diego Carlos. Very talented ball playing centre back. Really good chemistry with. Augustinsson, if I've said that right. I don't think I have. Yeah, Augustinsson, Swedish left back. They bought him from Werder Bremen once they got ready. Kunde, who I'm a big fan of Kunde as well. Mm. Uh, regards to playing out the back. And another one from Steve said, uh, Sevilla, I've kept quite a lot of sheets, clean sheets this year. Very impressive. Uh, Oli's gone out to say, I think, Vlavic is one for the summer. And Steve again. Steve's all over the comments tonight. Botman <laughs> was crucial to Lille winning League 1 in 2021. Really good centre-back that hasn't been good this year, League 1, but Champions League is a different story. And Oli again, Digne has been crap the last 12 months. We'd rather go for someone like Taglavico or Gaia from Gaia's a great player. Well. Yeah. yeah, it's quality left back. And also, Johnny mentioned earlier on, we have a new member, Wahil Abulson. So thank you very much for joining. You've got unlocked loads of videos from yourself, from Johnny, from Sam, and of course, with your comments out as well. Oli again. If you get the best out of Ramsey, he's a general world class player on his day. Always shows it for Wales. I think Ramsey is worth the risk of mine. My, my only problem is that he's got injuries, lack of game time at UV. Barbara's gone on to say, I prefer Gordon Ramsey myself. <laughs> and Wales gone on to say, uh, Do you think, sorry, I've mispronounced that. Do you think Diego Costa signing uh, would be good for a free agent? Liam, would you take Costa on a free? No, he's um, too erratic. In probably right. coming off of wages. Oh, I would take Diego Costa 100%. To the end of the season? Yeah, yeah, 100%. That guy, that guy is, he is so dogged. And the thing that I like about him so much, his intensity, he gets other people riled up. And um, yes, yeah, sometimes he does have the chance to take bait also. But 
I love the aggression of uh, Diego Costa. And but my only problem again, he hasn't. He went from Chelsea to Atletico Madrid, I believe. What three, four years ago? Featured a little bit for Atletico, and then's been kind of gone ever since. So but he was he was in um, Brazil, wasn't he? Yeah, Hi. yeah, Atletico Mineiro. Yeah. Um, Bob, I was about to say, why don't we just pay these guys release causes to get them all? Just, just pay them all. Just pay them all. Not every, them. not every. Um, the problem is only La Liga, I believe. There is a there's a release clause in every single contract. That's why like Benzema has like a billion dollar um, yeah, release clause. To so it's like it's like basically taking the piss out of the whole. Oh, you have to have a release clause. Uh, I think same thing with Fede Valverde. It's like six hundred million plus of his um, release. Never go for Fede. Never yeah. Go for yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Steve again. Actually, I watch a lot of the Russian Premier League. Uh, Zenit is a good side. Look out for Claudinho as well. It's Zenit, wonderful young Brazilian player with nine goals in all competitions. And Steve's had to say about Osman as well would be a welcome alternative to Wilson. Jay in Atlanta. Long time subscriber, long time member of ours, good friend of the channel. Um, me made, made it before the end, lads. More excited right now than I have been for years. Jay, we're still going for another half an hour, man. Keep your knickers on, Jay. Yeah. Keep your knickers on. And I still need to say Darwin Nunez proved that he's guaranteed 15 goals a season for Benfica. Good displays in the Champions League, too. He led the assist charge in Portugal, says Steve. And a couple from Oli before we move on to the next part of the show. Niketia is not a Premier League quality striker right now, which is what we need. And the last one from Oli is Diego Carlos. If I could choose only one out of all the lists that we talked about the first half, he would have the biggest impact in my opinion. So please keep your um, comments coming as well. And, you know, uh, well, we'll read them out. Uh, I'd like Jane Lat and so on and Oli in Strasbourg, Steve. Um, so And also Super Chats will also get read out as well. Jane Lat is still here. Yes, thanks, Jay. Thanks, Jay. And while he has also said who should be the next sign before the Waffa game, I think everybody said in the first half, defenders. I would say strikers over the defenders. We haven't got any strikers. Yeah, it's 50 50, isn't it? Maybe you, if you had to choose half the fan base, they'll probably say one or the other. Right, well, that was, that was probably before Wilson was out for two months. I'm going yeah, mean, to lean, lean personally more towards uh, striker, and I use Leeds United as the example. Um, do you guys really think that Leeds United would be struggling this much if Bamford was around for the entire season, no knocks, no injuries? Yeah. I don't think so. I'm not saying that they'd be first place or anything crazy, but I think they would be at least, what, 12th, 10th? Because he, he he had a very good year last year, and I'll give him the benefit of the doubt that if he was around for Leeds, with that focal point, we've, we've seen Dan James try to step in as that center forward, and it hasn't, it hasn't worked, even though they have Rafinha – very good manager too, and Melier and some other good players. You really, really—they're not Man City. They're not Man City where they can get away without having an out-and-out -out striker to bang you in goals. What Bamford had sixteen last year. Yeah, he did. Spot on. Yeah, more than yeah, like fifteen plus goals, and everybody was like, eh, "I don't know about him," but he—I think they're really missing him right now. So I would lean more towards striker, and also who's to say that Wilson will come back after two months or maybe it's three months or four, but then he gets injured right away again. It's, it's a bit too inconsistent. Right. Then let's move on to the show. Funny enough, Callum Wilson is the first uh, topic before we get on um, to the Cambridge game. I how speaking to Jim White earlier on and talk sport. Liam, he's going to be out for at least two months. Yeah. Where, where the goal is going to come from. Um, hopefully someone that isn't playing for Newcastle at the moment. Because <laughs> um, I don't think, obviously, Joe Linton's now the best centre mid in the world, so it's going to be, he's he's not going to be anywhere near. And then you've got to rely on ESM and Dwight Gale, who kind of hit a barn door. Um, so you're looking at, you need to bring somebody in immediately. Because um, if you say that two months... Any names? Um... That um, Serbian lad, I can't remember what his name begins with a V. Gustav Vlaovic. Oh, or Izak from Real Sociedad. Yeah, you mentioned him when we all met up, didn't you? The three, Early on the this season. Lad. Um, but if you look at that, that's two months, and then he's going to, going to, going to play. He's, he'll not be starting for the first three or four games anyway, so then you really look and he's out for three months before he's back match fit. Yeah. Okay. Right, there's a Wilson's out injured, which is the killer. ESM, probably not going to be involved. I wouldn't have thought so tomorrow because his injury is, what, two to three weeks? 
So expect those two guys. Look, we are expecting to be a, a rotated side. What we are doing, us three, the other two don't know it. We're actually picking the side for tomorrow using a formation builder. So we'll agree and we'll probably disagree on the lineup because we I'm going to Scooby Doo. So play along at home where we get onto that a little bit later. But uh, the, the opposition will begin there. I'll come to yourself, Steve. Um, Cambridge, obviously, we all had a brief chat in the WhatsApp saying, does anybody know much about what, uh, Cambridge? No, because we're not League One followers, although a club down the road are heavily involved in League One. There's the first yeah. thing I've got. Um, but Cambridge are sitting currently in the minute, 16th in the league. They got promoted from League Two last season, so they're doing all right, five points clear. Of relegation, yes, they have had a couple of extra games, but we're playing against a side here that are towards the the bottom end of League One. This on paper, I know football's not played on paper, but this really should be a comfortable Newcastle win. Ah, uh, it's a magic. the The thing is that I like so much about cup competitions in England, and you know, also in France, I really like um, the Coup de France or DFB Pokal. It's cup sets. Um, so I don't think for a minute that Eddie Howe should be telling his guys, oh, yeah, we're going to win this smoke them. Let's put out a super weak lineup to, you know, save some fitness or whatever. Like, we need to go out and take care of business because there will be cup sets this weekend. I think there will be. Um, it happens <laughs> every third round. We see it. Uh, I think Leeds last year lost to, uh, what, a League Two side away? Um, so it happened. It it. it that's what the FA Cup and these cup competitions are famous for, the cup sets. Um, so I'm not taking anything for granted, and I'm and I'm sure that Cambridge United, regardless of, yeah, the quality, um, won't be the same as ours. Um, definitely not. But they're going to play their hearts out, you would think, and we can't, we can't be anything less than 100%. We have to match them, 50-50 balls, um, all that sort of stuff, passion, desire, all that sort of stuff, and apply it. So... That's that's my take on it. I'm very excited because I love the FA Cup. I love the uh, when the minnows win, but hopefully that ha doesn't happen tomorrow. Um, hopefully not. Hopefully not. Fingers crossed. I'm, I will be there, of course, bringing you all the content outside St James Park. And Steve yeah. might be on his own. I don't know if Liam's available. I don't know if Brandon's available. That's but all Steve's, right. got, Steve's got the logins. Um, if uh, Liam's jumping on to watch the game, but Ollie's gone out to say it. Surely Gale starts tomorrow. I could probably say that as well. No. I do want to touch on a couple of under twenty three lads in a second, but Jane Alant has also gone out to say it's it's what I do that defines me. Batman. I think he's taking mm. the mickey a little bit there, isn't he? With Batman, I don't know if that a quote from Batman. But it is is it that Batman's real account that's liking all the things on Instagram? I think it's his verified account. I. It's it's madness, isn't it? It's absolutely yeah. cracker. Unless he's like texting his pals saying like, oh, look at these idiots, like this thing I'm coming to the club and just... <laughs> just doing it for the bands. Yeah. Cambridge in the last six results, I'll come to you, Liam. Um, obviously, the uh, looking at those results, a little bit of a mixed bad, bad bag here. They've uh, played in the EFL Trophy in the FA Cup against lower opposition. You expect them to win that. Battered Cheltenham. That's a great win, whatever league you're in, 5 nil away. And then got beat of Charlton, but the recent two games are against teams that are at the top of League One, which is Rotherham, who are top. And Dan Barlaza actually got um, a player of the month, which is great for him. And uh, they drew against Portsmouth. So it's a bit of a mixed bag, but I asked Steve the same question. Do you expect Newcastle just to win this comfortably? Um, I'm going to say I think it'll actually be pretty close because, I mean, in their last five games, they've won Steve, more Steve, games than us. Steve, I'll, Steve, I'll put in a ass, ass lay, mate. Oh, oh sorry. Um, I said right. Steve, I'll, I'll, I'll Steve, Steve, Steve as well. <laughs> Never mind. Um, but it depends what team he puts out. If he puts out a really weak team because he doesn't want to risk any of the more the first team getting injured, then it could be like a... 1 0 win, but if we played with full strength team tomorrow, we'd walk over them. Which being 19th, you would rather them play like a slightly weakened team so then you're not risking your, your, your start as for the Premier League. Yeah, okay. Well, have a look at Cambridge's um squad as well because let's face it, we don't know too many of them. Again, I was asking the lads on the WhatsApp, it goes, Do you know any of them Cambridge players? And Steve pops up and uh, where's Houlihan, who everybody watches. Yeah, he's played Premier League football with Norwich, hasn't he? So he's the one that you're probably going to look at. He's chipped in with a, with a few goals. And the other two lads that I've highlighted is Joe Ironside, who's bagged in 11 goals in League One 
this season. But Sam Smith, who was sent off on Monday night against Portsmouth, who plays just behind Ironside, has actually bagged in 12 in all competitions. Yeah. It's impressive. But um, they'll come and they'll play a 4 2 3 1. His um, um, last album wasn't bad as well, to be fair. So, <laughs> uh, You're not a big fan of um, the other Sam, Sam Fender? I'm not a fan of either Sam. <laughs> I'll just leave it there. He just, he's literally just lives around the corner from you, Liam. So that's, that's disgraceful. That like, <laughs> um, I want I wanted to touch upon a full house, which is absolutely incredible. I'll come back to you, Liam, for this. This this looks like it's going to be a sellout. Fifty two thousand against Cambridge. Yeah, it's it's it, it's crazy because I know probably last year we would have got about thirty thousand. Um, because obviously people take the kids and stuff like that. But I think it's one of these games where it shows that just a little bit of commitment from the board and the the P, like the PR side of things where they communicate with the fans makes a massive difference to the club. Like you would never you're never going to see like a Chelsea or an Arsenal get fifty thousand in their stadium for a, a cup game against Cambridge. Yeah, Johnny's sticking up for his any 29 lads. Miss um, <laughs> Mavis Defender. And um, another member, thank you very much. Daniel Brown has just joined. It is uh, under the join button underneath this video, and it'll unlock loads of videos. And um, you get your comments read out on certain shows like this, like the black and white show. Um, so thank you very much, Daniel, for joining. And I'll also send out the Discord link for our new members tonight as well in the community tab. So keep an eye out for that later on tonight. Um, we'll talk about Newcastle now then. Kieran Trippier is... Oh, we've got another member. We'll have to pause there. Give me a second. Uh, Philippe has joined. Thank you very much, Philippe, for becoming a new member. Appreciate that very much. Exactly what I've just said uh, just before with Daniel and uh, unlock a lot more videos, personal videos, what's happening with the channel, uh, the successes, the guests coming up on the Greenwood Mulliner show as well. Uh, so thank you very much uh, for joining. Right, as I was saying, I'll come back to it. Kieran Trippier is go is free to play. Steve, do you expect him to play some part tomorrow? Um, I want him to play, but I, I'm kind of fifty fifty on this. I I no. I really really want him to because I was talking, uh, you know, after the last watch along that I was on that if we get January signings or do something clever, I think would be. Uh, recalling Kellen Watts, get your business done early, and then this is the springboard, the Cambridge game, um, to get match fitness up because um, it won't be an easy game, I don't think, against Cambridge necessarily. You shouldn't ever expect that, and I don't think we're in any, um, you know, on paper, yeah, we we should be taking this comfortably, but football's not played out on paper, I, you know, regurgitating the same stuff. But this is important for match fitness. I think Kieran... Trippier starting gives us a better chance to win, regardless. Build up that match fitness. So Liam, would I would, you, would, I would start him. Huh? Say that again, sorry. Would you chuck him in, Liam? Not at all. I wouldn't risk him at all in this game. Just risk um, him because obviously you look at the next two fixtures after that. Watford leads. Poof. Exactly. That that's six points there that we should be taking, and I would rather risk him in the Leeds and Watford games than Cambridge. That where, where I do. If you look at hindsight, we're not going to win the we're not going to win the FA Cup, but I'd want, I'd rather we stay in the Premier League. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Another member, Chris. Thank you very much before uh, becoming a YouTube member. Ex exactly what I've just said before. Uh, you'll now have loads of videos unlocked, and you'll have roughly ten to fifteen per month extra. Plus, I like you get you in the Discord later on tonight as well. So, thank you very much before becoming a member, Barbara. One of our members, Man City, only winning two 0 To Swindon, um, yeah, I got that game on. Yeah, Philippe, there we go. I've just highlighted your message, Philippe. So thank you for joining and being a member. Um, I play him 10, 10 to 15 minutes. Played early on this week, so he's not unfit. We need him fit for Watford. Yeah. So you say I wouldn't even contemplate playing if he's already been playing. He's been playing for Madrid all, yeah, all yeah. season this season. So he's not going to be not fit. He, he, like It's just going to be anything. Like, well, I haven't played in a couple of weeks, so everyone's going to be pretty rested. It'll yeah, be interesting. Want... It'll be sorry to interject, but um, I have seen that like Watford have made they made they uh they recently signed Hassan Kamara from OGC Nice in France um, because Danny Rose is out at left back. Um, I'd be interested to see what our relegation rivals are doing as well because I think Watford play Leicester away in the FA Cup tomorrow. And then I forget who Leeds play, but it'll be interesting to see. And they also signed um, Samir. Uh, Brazilian defender from Udinese, the parent club. Um, so yeah, Watford, 
Yeah. Those are, those those guys are crazy. The Watford and Udinese owners, they go through managers like crazy. Um yeah, but I'll be interested. Around. I'll be in huh? They just swap all the players around. Yeah. Good order, another one. Well, that was the rumor with Matty Longstaff, wasn't it? That the Udinese <laughs> were gonna buy him, then they were gonna like loan him to Watford. Mm. Yeah, and he could be he could play. Matty Longstaff's another one. He might get a get a yeah. run out of the Murray. You just never know. It depends how fit he is. And well, speaking of if if they play Matty Longstaff tomorrow, then he's not going to go back out alone because he can only register for two clubs in a season, can't you? Yeah, spot on. Good shout. But and just a uh, thing on Matty Longstaff, he does not need to be registered in our 25 man squad because he's born two months after a cut off. So it gives um, Eddie Howe a bit of food for thought. Speaking of that, uh, youngsters, I've highlighted these three kids because these are the main stars, you would probably say, from our youth academy. Dylan Stevenson on the left, banging in the goals, left, right, and centre. Did a video on him on NFTV Extra the other day. And then you've got Elliot Anderson. He looks a bit like Ross Barkley in that picture there, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Yeah. And then over on the right-hand side, you've got Joe White. Uh, Liam, I'll come to you. Would you like to see all three of these feature? Yeah, because because then this is the calibre they should be at now, because what, they're all about 18, 19? They, they should be able to play in League One. Um, so you would like to see some of the youth team featured. Um, because because they should easily breeze breeze past these. Do you know what I mean? <clears throat> I'm excited. I want to see them play because this is the best chance to play them. It's a home game. I don't think they'll start out of the three. Probably Elliot Anderson's got the better shout to so start yeah. if he does. But you know, if you two 0 up after seventy minutes, chuck them on. There's no yeah. point bringing on a Jeff Hendrick or a. Do you know what I mean? Chuck yeah, the kids yeah. on. Get me experience, Steve. So uh, would you I like to see all? Sorry, yeah, go on, Lim. I think this has been the problem with Newcastle's academy for so long. Like we've had strikers that can span goals in the under twenty threes, and they just don't get the chance in the first team. Because I think it was Tim Herdman. I think he was a big, big six foot odd Top center, Herdman, right, striker, and he he never got a chance. And then he's now at like a northern league side. But it's just like we just need if we if we're doing an academy, you've got to give them the chance to impress. Yeah, I think um, Barbara's made a point here about Trippier. Put him on show on the yeah. bench, get the crowd excited. I think you'll be unveiled regardless yeah. whether, he, whether he plays as well. And Jane Atlanta said, um, Trip yesterday felt match fit, ready to go, having played just recently in the uh, the press conference recently as well. So we'll have to say on that. Um, on that, right? Okie dokie. So that's the list. We'll, well, what we'll do before we'll pick with team, uh, because we are using a formation builder. We'll have a look at the, the final WhatsApps, um, in a second. Um, what's more important, I know staying up is the obvious answer. Um, I'll rephrase that question actually, Steve. Would you like to see a cup run at Newcastle? But on the second question, would that interfere with staying up with all the fixtures, especially those two extra games that are backlogged? Um, I think that we need to, I think that we really need to start getting used to winning games. That's my thing. Um, and the more you win, the more that builds confidence and that can assist you. Yeah. You might be more tired, but confidence is everything and confidence and, you know, ability. I think confidence is more important um, than that because you got to believe in yourself. You can have an, op- you can have all the ability in the world, but if you're not confident, you know, like, like uh, Coutinho, for example, I don't think he's been confident over the past few years with Barcelona. He has the ability. We all know he does, and we think he'll – I mean, I don't know what you guys think of the Coutinho to Villa signing, but, you know, he could do a job. He could do a job. You never know. Uh, but he needs to get his confidence back up. So, yeah, for me, I would take winning games over losing to Cambridge. That yeah. That, that is – you know, we've only, we've only won one game all season. This is a great chance to yeah. put a few goals in, get a bit of confidence in the squad. Yeah. Even if it is the fringe players who get a run out, it's a great chance yeah. to, fantastic chance. Squad to, morale, uh, squad morale. Exactly, winning games breeds confidence. Uh, we've got two uh, WhatsApps are coming. I'll ask Liam this question. Uh, Dean, thank you very much for your message. He says, "I love Newcastle to get rid of some of the Deadwood goalkeepers we have and get Dean Henderson in on loan with a view to a permanent." I think this era is something that we could improve on. What's your thoughts? Um, if you said this last season, I would have disagreed with you, but I think all three of them have made errors this season, and I'm probably one of Dub Braga's biggest fans, but I think even he started to make a, a few clangers, but to be fair, we've been getting battered every week, so there's no... It's it's probably within the odds that he is going to make a mistake because of the, the amount of shots he's keeping within, but 
if you got rid of Debravka and Darlow want to be number one, so you would have to get rid of both of them if, for Dean Henderson. Um, and I don't think Dean Henderson is going to be Man, U's, Man United's number one for a while because the gear has started his form's back in the day. Yeah. Back in the day. yeah. yeah. Um, so it, you you would look at it like you would sign, like like you said, a, a loan that's permanent, but you need to get rid of Debravka. You probably need to get rid of all three keepers, Woodman, Debravka and um, Darlow. Yeah. Definitely agree too. We have to go and Imran. And um, this one's for you, Steve. Do you guys reckon? Uh, sorry, who do you guys reckon is the most reasonable striker we can get in? Um, well, uh, I wonder what he means by reasonable. Probably like, realistic, possibly. Yeah, realistic, yeah. Um, I think you could pluck as Moon off of uh, Zenit um, because they do have other goal scorers at Zenit, like Juba. Juba has ten goals this year. Um, same with Claudinho, who I was talking about earlier. Really promising Brazilian winger. They uh, bought him from uh, our Red Bull Bragatino in Brazil, and they've been producing some, some really good players, actually. Uh, that Red Bull link with New York Red Bulls and Red Bull Leipzig and whatnot. Uh, so I think that Zenit could survive, and you know they, they have other goal scorers in the team. Um, and they're also used to winning, and they're actually in a really big – um, title race with Dinamo Moscow, who are trying to win their first league title in 30 odd years. So, um, I, I would say Asmoon would probably be that. I, I don't think Benfica would let go of Darwin Nunez quite yet because they're still in Champions League and still trying to um, compete with uh, Sporting CP and Porto for Liga NOS title. So, um, I would say Asmoon, I, I, you know, I would pick Asmoon as most uh, realistic. So. So as Moon for Steve, so thank you very much for all your WhatsApps. Uh, that is it for the WhatsApp side of things. Um, members, if you still want to keep your comments coming, and um, super chats will also be read out just before we wrap up. Um, this is going to be the fun bit. So, we're going to try and we'll get the share screen facility up. I'm going to try and pick with team, right? What formation, Liam, is Eddie Howe going to play tomorrow? Is it the one on screen, or is he going to change that? Um, I would sort of try and mi mirror the formation that we'll want to play going forward so the players get more used to it because then if, if it is a different formation then we'll play it under Steve Bruce so I would go with that one personally 4-3-3 four, so four, 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 well 4-3-3 four, three, three. yeah right yeah. Steve I'm letting you have first pick on who is playing in goal tomorrow uh, give me Dubravka you really think Dubravka is is this what I think will happen or what I would but Eddie Howe, what Eddie Howe would go with? Oh, if I had to okay, if I had to predict what he would go with. Um, okay, then I would probably say uh Darlow, probably. But Darlo I mean, even what actually no, I'm gonna go Woodman. I'm gonna go Woodman. <laughs> Are you, you're not, is what? it not gonna be Gillespie? <laughs> nah, final answer, give me Woodman. He'll give another he'll give the third goalie a shot, and see what he's all about. But we're going for Freddie Woodman is going to start and goal. Um, yeah. If you disagree, you know, please let us know in the comments and give us a stick. We're, we're happy to take yeah. it. Uh, so Freddie Woodman is with goalkeeper. Liam, I'll come to uh, you for right back. Who's going to play a right back tomorrow? I thought you were going to go left back. <laughs> so what... Want left back then? We'll go left back if you want. Um, Richie. You think Richie will just literally? Yeah. That's quite an easy one, isn't it? Because there's anybody else. Right then, um, so Matt Ritchie will play there. Now, judging on the centre-backs, I think Kieran Clark will play. Yeah. I think he will for this game. So I'm going to go for Kieran Clark uh, to play a centre-back on this one. Steve, you're next. Who's going to play alongside him? Is the captain playing or is he getting rested? Uh, I think Lascelles will start tomorrow, probably. I, I would have said Fernandez, myself, like. Yeah, but he hasn't played Fernandez, though. But that's that's the thing though. This is, this is a game where you you'd rather play someone that you're not playing over, like your main starter. That's true, but mm, so nah, I think he'll play. Well. I think he'll play the cells. I think he's gonna go with the cells. And so the right back, anyways. <laughs> well, is it Krath? Is it Mankio? Or is it Trippier? Um, that's a tough one. So I would go Kraft. So who we got? So we got Steve. Liam, then me, then yeah, Steve, Liam. Yeah, to you. Yeah, you Liam, you're going path. Yeah, I didn't want the right back, but I ended up having it. Oh, Fernandez is yeah. injured, someone was saying. 
Yeah, Sam. Sam said Fernandez is injured. So we've got Woodman, Richie, Clark, Lascelles is and Kraft uh, are the back four. Let's move into up to midfield and um, I'll no actually Steve, you can have first pick. Uh, I think Willick will start. You think it'll be a slap in the middle or just out wide? Probably out wide. Middle. Yeah. Okay. Right. That's we'll go Willick. I uh, will play. Um, hate to say it, lads, but I do think. Yeah, that's that, 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 that was my pick. I think Jeff Hendrick will play tomorrow. I think it's a chance to try and get rid of him, play him, yeah. see if anybody wants to pick him. I think Jeff Hendrick will play tomorrow, unfortunately. Liam, you've got the next midfielder. Elliot you Anderson. Got Anderson, you think you'll start? Mm, I do. I'll, 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 if, it depends how... Um, it, de- it depends how Eddie Howe wants to play, but I think that is oh, uh, quite a rotated team. Um, so I'm going to go Anderson. Oh, he is. There he is, right at the bottom. Elliot Anderson is getting a start in midfield mm. with Full Liam. So that's an interesting three. I think Hendrick will definitely play. Mm. Steve's favourite. I think Willock and Elliot Anderson will get a start. Interesting. Right. Lee, uh, no, it's not Steve. Um, who would you like? I'll let you pick out of the three. Um, I'll take striker. I think I think Dwight Gale will play. Yeah, it's an easy one with uh, Wilson being in. I agree yeah. on that. I think Gale will play. Um, now, um, oh, who do I go with here? I think Murphy will play as well. I don't know if he'll play left or right. I'm going to say right. Yeah, I right. Think, I think Jacob Murphy will play. But I could be wrong. He could be on the left. Now, Liam, you got the final one. Just trying to think who can play left wing. Joe Lytton could. Could do a job out there. Um, mm, true. Elliot, Elliot Anderson could have played further forward. I uh, actually I'm gonna go with Joe Lytton further forward because when he's played against um lower opposition or lower opposition, he's played well. Because didn't, didn't, didn't he not play against uh, Newport Town, I think, and then he scored a couple of worldies. Newport and, County. Uh, yeah. No, Newport that's County. Yeah, I think. Um, so, but yeah. So that's our team for tomorrow, folks. Um, I, I, I would have like Miggy and ASM on the bench for like impact players. So we wouldn't start Miggy on the left? No. Actually, no. no. Well, this is what we're trying to predict Eddie Howe's team. It's not our team. Yeah. That, that we must stress. So we think Eddie Howe will go with Woodman in goal. Emil Kraft is your right back. Or on the left, it's Richie. Two centre backs of Clark and Lascelles. Three midfielder of Willock, Hendrick. And you've got young Elliot Anderson. Jacob Murphy on the right, Joe Litton further up in, on the left and in support of Dwight Gill. So I'm sure there's going to be people that um, are not going to be happy with that um, formation. Let's have a look at um, who is not happy. Who's not happy in our... Oh, we've got a new member. CFC Florida. I hope that's not Chelsea, mind. But thank you very much for becoming a member. I do appreciate that as well. You missed it earlier on what I said. Uh, members get uh, the Discord, which we'll chat on. And you also get exclusive videos, and we'll definitely read out your comments on screen. Um, Sam said Murphy, Miggy, and Gale is your front three. Philippe says Anderson will play. Um, so yeah, there's not many people that massively disagree with it. One or two, yes, but I think it's because we're expected to rotate this side, aren't we? Aren't we, Steve? We're expected to put out, you know, a rotated side. Yes, we haven't yeah. won a game. We've only won one game all season. Yeah. But we are expected to play a couple of kids, a couple of fringe players. Yeah, I would think so. Um, I just really want to see Trippier out there. Um, I, like I said, I think it's a springboard. And to be honest, um, if if he's not worth risking against a uh, League One side because you think he might get injured, then what? you're a pro football. You get injured walking around your house and you trip up and you fall down the stairs. Like, it, it life is inherently risk, and especially if you're playing a sport, you might get injured in, in any in any game. You know, I think I, I just think that for Trippier, it would be nice to see him play right back. Personally, yeah. So right, then let's wrap up with some score predictions. Excuse me. Um, I'm going to say two 0 I think Newcastle will keep a, a well needed clean sheet as well, and I think Newcastle will dominate possession. And I think, yeah. 
Cambridge might scare us the odd couple of times on the counter, but I expect Newcastle, even with a rotate side, to win this. I will be shocked. I'm saying 2 0. Steve? Uh, I'll go 2 to 1. I'll go 2 to 1. Um, it is slightly risky because looking at uh, Cambridge's last five games, the both teams to score has only hit, what, one out of five times or two out of five? So usually when, you know, in the past five Cambridge games, it, it, both teams have not scored. But um, I'm, I'm, I'm still worried if the Sells and Clark start. Uh, yeah, we need those center backs real bad. Yeah, but we've gone with Fernandez isn't going to play. Fernandez doesn't play tomorrow. That's him yeah. out the door for me. Yeah. He didn't, no, he's injured. But he well, he's injured, injured, yeah. Yeah, All right, sorry. Ignore what I just said. Liam, what's your score prediction? 4-0 uh, Newcastle. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, nice. I'll give you the I'll duel it to get one. Uh Lascelles to get one, Murphy to get one, and um Hendrick to get one. Jeff Hendrick. His mm. final sign off. So score predictions. I've got two nil. Steve's got two one. Liam's gone four nil. So hopefully we are all smiling come five PM. Three nil says Philippe as well. Uh, Jane Alanta says 3-0 as well but yeah that is it it's been a long show and now on 20 minutes the lads were talking all about the transfers if you missed any of that the first 40 minutes of the show is all about this transfer speculation so go back and rewind and also um, the second half was all about Cambridge game a couple of injury news as well and reading out your messages and it's good to get the black and white show back as well with all the interaction as well um, tomorrow uh, Steve is on the watch along he'll definitely be on and yes, uh, a couple of guests will talk about that behind the scenes. And then after full time, we'll have the match reaction and the last word using two fancy mics, which you'll see in action tomorrow night at St. James's Park. But if you can, smash that like. Thanks to all the lads, uh, Steve, Liam, and all the rest. Matt, Adam, <laughs> Adam God, this cough. I think I've got Corona. Um, Johnny and Carl as well. Thank you very much, everyone tonight. Smash that like. See you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.